and one of the things also like in trading in the crypto uh, compared to most of the scores compared to the gambling mm, uh, okay because of uh, okay the rules of gambling is one part is winning because of another part is losing and the second one is uh, you don't know the result like you don't know what's happening you just like invest uh, like blindly eyes so because so two two reasons kind of we can we can find out in same thing in the crypto okay but i i also do not agree with that but because gambling can be found in anything number one mm. but what is the definition of gambling like qimar and maisar so i did a lot of research on this topic and found that uh, like you have also indicated it that there are two main factors if you have these two main factors in one transaction then we call it uh, uh, gambling one is the game of chance meaning that uh, nobody knows that okay what is the outcome yes of this transaction okay so it's it depends on chance whether if the chance is favorable for me i will win if it is a chance against me i will lose so, and i do not know what will happen so it's a game of chance number 2 is about it's a, it's a zero sum game which means that like i cannot win if you do not lose so like your loss is my profit so it has to be this only then it will become gambling so like these two factors are combined together in a transaction then we say that like it's gambling what happens in crypto for example crypto if you are doing a spot trading of a halal crypto you are actually owning a token mm-hmm. so you are selling something and uh, the buyer is buying something so it's a sale contract and this is allowed in islam generally for uh, it's again uh, correct and uh, valid for apples for gold for money for for cryptos also also because it's a buying and selling thing gambling is completely different in that sense because here in a sale transaction both parties are gaining something out of it otherwise if if it it was not the case then and uh, then islam wouldn't allow it in the first place sharia wouldn't allow sale transaction in the first place both parties are actually benefiting from this transaction that's why it is allowed in sharia so similarly sale is like that so if you buy now the thing is like the question should be like whether are you buying something is it a sale contract or a gambling transaction you understand the question should be like that so then in that sense you can see that like when i buy bitcoin even i possess something when i walk out from this transaction then i have bitcoin for example i pay you us dollar you sell me bitcoins so then i own and possess those bitcoins with me when i walk out from this transaction and you will have uh uh dollars so there is a transfer of ownership previously you own bitcoin i owned us dollar after this transaction now you own us dollar i own bitcoin so there is a transfer of ownership there but in gambling it doesn't happen because i have to lose basically so but here both parties are benefiting from this transaction so and it's a sale transaction so that's how i see it but if you say it is gambling uh mostly people even sharia scholars they get confused it with speculation mm. now this is something different there is a difference between gambling and speculation what is the difference again you know the gambling there are two factors combined in one transaction then it's it becomes gambling what is a speculation a speculation means that that you are actually expecting something that it will in the future will generate some profits this is happening in every business why would you sell apple why would you sell gold why would you sell currencies or why would you sell mobile phone for example if you know that it is not going to generate me profit you speculate you expect that this is going to happen and i will generate some profit out of it so this is happening in every business so speculation itself if you look at the technical definition like the actual definition of a speculation 
then you would say that like it is allowed in and it is present in every business in every business it's not only so on the basis of a speculation you cannot say the business is haram or the transaction is haram a speculating means again i repeat but uh, speculating means like i am expecting that i am going to make some profit out of it and both parties are speculating basically in a sale transactions so speculation is there and that is why both parties are doing the transaction if they know they are going to make some losses why would they uh, come to execute that transaction in the first place yeah speculation uh, now i'm when you were talking i was thinking because uh, i did like a different businesses actually the, all of the businesses have some speculation even the stock market for example uh, when we buy like some stocks we are expecting price goes up but uh, this kind of uh, we used to say uh, whales big companies uh, they know where is the stop losses where they know like where people like wants to sell so like they they, they dump the price and then uh, they took the all the stop losses and price like go up so next day you wake up you lost you didn't lost but the price is almost same and that's happening very often in crypto because of this so far no uh, regulation no rules uh, so how the sharia looks at because speculation is not 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 it's not our uh, allowed but to work in one market it's a lot of speculation it's okay okay so i would say there are different factors we have to understand them the different concepts for example one is market intelligence yeah market intelligence means like you have some estimation you know that okay what is the demand for this specific share or a specific crypto and what will be the selling price what would be the buying price for example so this is all uh, estimations and market intelligence so you understand the market you try to understand the market before executing any transaction i think there is no problem with this you are just trying gather some information you do the research and then you are is thinking that okay when to make a move yeah so in sharia there is no problem with that but there is another thing which is called market manipulation mm. now market manipulation is not allowed in sharia what is it it's a combination of different tactics where you try to corner one segment of a market for example if you are a big whale or an institutional investor you try to basically uh, take advantage of the retail investors for so how do you do it you know that like when i start i am holding a lot of bitcoins when i start dumping in the market the prices will go down or gradually i will first uh, sell it in a small pieces for example like uh, creating a cascade so and driving the prices down so that like after that because i knew that like previously i wanted to basically buy a large amount of bitcoin so but before that i manipulated the market i created a cascade so that like the prices uh, suppressing the prices and once it hits my desirable level i buy the, in bulk for example Uh, a lot of bitcoin so it happens but this is market manipulation market manipulation is not allowed in in uh, in sharia because uh, it basically it's a set of different tactics different strategies different acts which uh, which involve deception which involve uh, uh, dishonesty sometimes uh, and also like uh, unethical ex practices so because of that it is not allowed in sharia but gathering market intelligence and then making a, the right move it's it's allowed mm. because when i was uh, i was talking with one of our scholars and uh, about the gambling it's like i was explaining like it's not gambling because i explained like before we enter the market we do the anal- uh, uh, we do the analysis we check the news and so on and he give me example okay even the betting for uh, for for football matches or for horses these people also do the analysis like they check the the player they check the matches before that and they spend a lot of time for that but it's, it's gambling yeah you are right so in in the sense that of market intelligence and calculation and estimation i think uh, he was right that if you are uh, executing a transaction a sale transaction you do 
research, you do market intelligence, uh, you gather market intelligence, and then you is do some estimation only then you do it. It can also happen in gambling. When people are betting, they can also do a lot of calculation, estimation. There is no doubt about it. But the differentiating factor is one is gambling with two factors combined in one transaction. The first one is a sale contract, which is allowed in Sharia. So regardless of whether whatever your market intelligence is or if it is similar method you are using, for betting and for sale. But sale is allowed because in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, directly mentioned that uh, So bay is halal, sale is halal. As long as sale transaction is there clearly and uh, there is a transfer of ownership and possession is there and uh, subject matter is halal and it fulfills all the trans uh, values uh, the the requirements and principles of a sale contract then it's a sale contract it's not gambling so i think that gambling then it matches mostly for futures futures market option markets yeah so i mean we were discussing only about a spot yeah, yeah. trading and uh, then there are other financial instruments like features, forwards, and options. These are derivatives. But these derivatives are not Sharia compliant for the reasons that, okay, these are devices and tools for gambling. And how do I do it? Because even if you look at the future contract, a future contract, so there is no actual buying and selling. There is no actual sale contract mm. it's just like a commitment or a promise from one party that i will sell you something in the future okay and that promise is being traded in the market itself so this is like a future and what is an option option is again like a right to buy so it's not actual sale it's a right to buy in the future and with that you start selling that right in the market uh, in a nutshell. So these are devices and tools for gambling itself because there is no s actual selling and buying, but you are able to bet on the prices, that the prices direction, that whether they are going in the positive direction or in the negative direction, and how can I uh, benefit from it wherever the prices move. So, so in that sense, it is not confined, these futures, forwards, and options are not confined to crypto. Even futures, options, and forwards are not allowed in, uh, in currency market, in, in commodities market, in, uh, in another thing. So like even if you are buying futures of Apple, it is still a future, it's not allowed. I think that's why like most of the scholars uh, get confused uh, or misunderstood about uh, trading on crypto or stock because when I entered the crypto trading, uh, trading, I don't know, maybe 90% or 85% people are trading in futures. That's mm -hmm. why when we explain to the, in the scholars, they explain the futures trade. So in futures, if I buy, I'm betting if price goes up or down. I'm, I don't buy the asset. I just betting. It's yeah. uh, gambling. Yeah. But when we start working on the uh, spot, then it's like normal trading of Apple, as you explained. Because I buy, I buy from someone. For example, I buy from you. But you already make profit, and you sell to me. I buy it. I might make profit. I sell to uh, to someone else. He might make profit also when price goes up. So it's it's not like in spot. Not like. If I make profit, doesn't mean the other part has to make loss. So this is, I think, like a little bit misunderstood about scholars because everyone in trading, most of the people in trading works in futures. But really It's not everyone, sorry, but you are right that futures are not allowed and these are the tools for, uh, uh, for gambling. But again, we have to understand that these tools or these derivatives are not allowed even in the commodity market. So they are not confined or very unique or particular for crypto market. Hmm. So if you are you have a future of commo in the commodity market or currency market or in any other market, it is not allowed. A spot, then we can talk about what is halal and what is not halal. And if there is an actual sale contract or not, and if there is an actual sale transaction, then it would become halal regardless of whether after the sale what happens because if let's suppose that i buy a bitcoin from you and after uh, and it's a sale contract 
spot con- delivery uh, and the ownership has been transferred already it's it's up to me that whatever i want to do with it, with this bitcoin now so like just after uh, after getting the possession i immediately sell it to another person it's up to me yes why it should be hala why it should be haram mm. and if i want to hold it for 10 years or one year or one month it's up to me also because this is now my property my, uh, i have the ownership of it 